Hello, everyone. This is uh, Brent Waldron with Scout App and have Connor Fagan joining us as well. Um, we are doing a demo today on sourcing the job boards for candidates. So whether you're actively looking or trying to build a pipeline, whatever you're after, there's some techniques that we've learned and kind of mastered over the years of how to really use the job boards. But first, I'll give a quick intro about myself. And then Connor will introduce himself and give you a little bit of a talk of, uh, overview of Scout App. But so my name is Brant Waldron. Uh, we're out of uh, Salt Lake and Oregon's where our two offices are, and our company is Scout App. I first got into recruiting actually after the recession. I went worked for a software company that ended up going uh, under, and I needed a job and I think like a lot of people that started out in recruiting that was never like what they picked in college oddly enough but then I got into it and really started to like it and really enjoyed it and then after my first experience I got offered uh, an opportunity to go and start a staffing company and jumped at that opportunity and ended up building a company here in Utah to uh, the 11th fastest growing percentage-wise company in the in the state in 2016 but I kept coming around to this idea that hiring's a little bit broken and that I wanted to do something different about it and thought we could fix that with software. So about a year and a half ago, I left uh, my company and started Scout App. And so we started been building it ever since, launched uh, six months ago and have been growing ever since. But what we're to, going to do today is kind of give you a little bit of the tips that we do in the back end, but maybe that you are able to do or use and maybe it can benefit you for doing sourcing on your own. I'm going to pass this over to Connor for a quick intro of him. Hi all, so this is uh, Connor Fagan. I actually came into this uh, this industry a little bit differently than, than most. I, I did you know, a decade in, uh, in banking and, uh, and that's a very relationship oriented field. And when uh, when I was first talking to Brant about the idea that became Scout App, uh, at that time I was dealing with um, trying to hire a position that ended up taking about six months to fill, and uh, this something like this would have dramatically uh, helped me and increased morale, as, as everybody knows that deals with any type of hiring. Um, it's the most important thing you do, and it drives the culture. Um, of your practice and of your of, of whatever you're doing um and so that led to to the idea of scout app and so just a just a little bit of an overview of what scout app is is, is essentially we're we're an application that goes out and we scour all the job boards out there and select the best candidates for you the best resume for your particular position and then deliver them to you on a weekly basis uh, from there, it's like it's a very simple tool to look at the resume, the, the LinkedIn profile, and also we have a way of being able to say, oh, how do I like this candidate? Be able to take notes, and once you've selected the candidate that you you find as someone that you really want to pursue, uh, it actually drops it into a very simple applicant tracking software program that is very similar to like a Trello board, where you can move people through and basically in, in, the, in a couple of minutes, be able to determine where you're at in the hiring process and try to automate it as much as possible because the, the, everybody's busy. Everybody does not have a lot of time during, during the week, especially if you're managing or we're trying to put out whatever fire is coming up. And the whole goal of Scout App is to reduce the amount of time that you're spending out there searching for somebody uh, and also contacting somebody and managing and tracking where everything is going. We're trying to make this as efficient as possible um, for, for the hiring manager. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you Connor. So now we're going to dive into the meat and potatoes and of what we want to talk about. So the first part that I always do, that we always do when we're working with a client or in the past when I was working with clients to go out and find candidates is a review of the job description. Most job descriptions, to be honest, are, are, are worthless. I've talked to people that have pulled them from the next manager who wrote it three years ago and didn't update it. I've had one literally say I downloaded it from Google last night. 
I mean, they're hard to write. It takes time, and not everybody has time to do that. So we're not as worried as much about the job description, but we want to review that and really figure out what are the must-haves in that job description, right? Like, if this isn't on the resume, we don't want to talk to that person, right? So figuring that out, going through a job description, whether you're the hiring manager or if you're working with the hiring manager, sometimes you got to, there's a little bit of a process of working through that because sometimes the hiring manager thinks they can have the moon as far as a candidate, but they really can only pay to go to the launching pad as far as budget. So that's also another thing we talk about is, are you buying a candidate? Okay, I'm going to go get all the skills I have. I have a, uh, we have a big budget. We really need this person. Or are we going to build somebody? And then lining the expectations up so you don't spend a lot of time frustrated with the hiring manager, or frustrated with candidates that aren't matching up. Then we'll go through and look at nice-to-have skills. And a lot of times people will put in, like, works well with team. To be honest, you can't get that out of a resume, right? That's all going to be in the interview process. Um, and that's still even hard then to figure out. But we're trying to, to look, look at resumes, which are very subjective, right? And then we're being subjective on something that's subjective. Like the best resume doesn't always mean the best candidate and vice versa. T looked at some of the worst resumes and they're amazing candidates. They just don't know how to talk about themselves. So we want to try to boil it down to key skills, maybe education or experience that they have. So when we start writing uh, Boolean strings, and that's how I like to search. I don't like just doing like comma separated or keywords. I'll actually jump into uh, Monster and kind of will show you some of the Boolean strings that I would write. And then uh, also I'll pull up a job description with one of our Scout app uh, users and we'll look at some of the different Boolean strings. And when I write Boolean strings, I actually talk about doing kind of an accordion style. So I'll go some very big, long Boolean And then I'll kind of condense it down again to like two or three maybe words with ands in between them. Just because the algorithms on these job boards are, I mean, tell you, unless you know them, master them, but their job is to bring you more candidates. So there's times when I know I've done and strings and I get candidates that should not have been in there and vice versa. Or I know there's more candidates and I can find them, but the string's not pulling them in for some reason. So you almost got to be kind of manipulating, almost like playing an accordion. I think of accordion because my dad always joked growing up that was the only instrument he played, uh, which is a very interesting instrument to play. So we always think of that, of kind of expanding and collapsing, and it's a process. It's not like, hey, I'm going to do one string and be done. And that's also why I have a, a, some of the challenge with some of these email alerts in the Monster, and Dice, and ZipRecruiter is – they're just going to take that one string and send you candidates. And I used to get the same candidates over and over and over again. Um, so it's really problematic to just like, and I got to where I just essentially ignored all the emails. So I got to where I wanted to hunt and look for people. So I'm just going to say we're in, uh, in Seattle. And then I also think about radius, right? You got to think about the commute and where you're at. Seattle, I know, I mean, 50 miles, that'd probably be a pretty hefty commute with crossing the bridges and a number of waterways and stuff like that. So I'm going to drop that down to 20, maybe, maybe even, uh, maybe, maybe 30, depending on what I get. In these job boards, you also have some features down here where you can change uh, search fields, default search field. I always keep mine at Boolean. So if I jump into Scout app and look at one of our positions real quick. and I look at their information. So we've already had them do their must-have skills right here. So we have Web Development, Linux, REST, and this is a technical position. So if you don't know those things, these are questions you need to go and talk to the hiring manager about. Okay, what does Web Development mean? What does that mean to you? What does that look like? Okay, Linux, like is this just someone that has Linux on there or is it someone that's doing command line in Linux or say it's accounting, like if someone just has an, a degree in accounting or someone that's been an accountant for three years or, you know, someone that has a, an HR, has SHRM certification, what are you looking for and kind of qualify that? And REST, what is REST? Is that, I mean, some of these technical terms, like there's so many of them that mean the same thing. 
they almost got to you go out and almost research what rest means if you can't get it from the hiring manager. And I'm using a technology position because a lot of times just because of the number of different terms, they're very, they can be very complicated. Um, and they're actually great for writing some Boolean strings. So I'm going to take this information. As you notice, I don't even really look at the job description. I'm not worried about that. I want to find the talent first. So in web development, that's pretty broad. And I'm almost going to assume that a lot of most people are doing web development. So it won't necessarily be like one of my main things that, that I, I put into my, my Boolean string. But I'm going to start out, one thing I always start out is like with is title, right? So I want a, a developer or, and I always do lowercase for my terms and capitals for my ands and ors, and you can do an and not as well. And then quote, uh, quotations make you, if you're doing multiple words, it searches for that, those two words or three words together. So if I do software engineer, it's going to serve for software engineer, not software or engineer, because if you wrote it without the quotes, that's what it would do in the system. And we can do, you know, programmer, if I can spell it right. And then when I close it with a bracket, now it just searches, it'll say, I want someone that has developer or software engineer or programmer on the resume. And then I'm going to go into what he was looking for, like, so I'm going to go and Linux. And so REST, I know, is a number of different things. So it can be REST or RESTful. And ideally, REST should pick up RESTful. I just don't trust the algorithms that much to be able to pick that stuff up. Or there's a thing called web services, which are in the same same vein. I can even. Or microservices. And it's interesting because like microservices, web services, sometimes these words will be written as one word or as two words or with a hyphen. And so sometimes I play around with that. For time's sake, I won't write out all, all of those. And I'm going to close that, and I'm going to just see what I get. So that's kind of a boole the initial Boolean string that I would start out with. And then I'm going to go and search, and then we'll dive into a little bit of the filters in Monster and see what we get. And then I'll come back and manipulate or tweak that string to see what other candidates I can find. So, right, I mean, we get almost 1,000. To be honest, that's too many for me to look at. So, and we're getting developers, and I always take kind of a snapshot and say, this guy looks interesting just because it says eboard member. Um, so I'm going to look at this front end developer, take a look at them. So in Monster, you get so many views per month. And if you just click right here, it gives you a, a kind of like a text version of their information. So this doesn't count as a view. But to be honest, I really don't like looking at these views very often. Um, I probably waste more uh, views than I need to, so I actually normally click the resume because I want to see what they wrote and how they wrote it. Full stack engineer, uh, doing lots of HTML, CSS, looks like a good developer. Been at one company for a while now, which is great, you know, especially in technology, people jump around a lot. He's got RESTful APIs with client websites, that's good. Let's see, so developer, that's great. And you've got Linux Unix, doesn't look like it's a, it's just one of his skills listed here. And that's the other problem with like even technical positions or resumes is a lot of candidates are going to throw in every term they ever worked with because they know that's going to help them show up higher as, as far as this percentage right here on the algorithm. So this person looks, looks interesting, has good experience. So if I wanted to talk to him, I'm going to uh, download that resume right here, and then I'd be able to jump, download it, reach out to him, contact him, or you can forward the candidate to somebody else in your organization, or if you want to forward it to the higher manager, say so-and-so looks good, whatever the case may be. I don't really use Monster, obviously, that much, because that's what a lot of what our tool does, but I don't use it a lot to, like, store and track candidates. I just don't, I don't like that feature and availability. So now if I want to read find this search from almost uh, 1,050, I can come in here and I can manage my, my fields. 
So one, I can add a job title. So, so sometimes I'll pull a job title out of here if it's not working well for me, and I'll put it into here just to see different results. I can do years of, years of experience, when was the resume updated, because more and more on the job boards, they're not showing you when the candidate last updated their resume. They may show when they registered or modified, and why they do that is, one, they want you to think there's more candidates out there that are looking when they're not. And my advice with that, we may actually just take that and run with it. So if you get a resume that's three years old, that candidate may very well be looking right now, or they may be starting the process or at least entertain it. Some that posted last week or even a, a month ago or three months ago, there's a good chance that they're fairly well into an interviewing process with a number of companies and don't want to add anything else into the into their onto their plate as far as interviewing. Or they're already off the market, which happens quite a bit in this market. People fly fast. And so that's sometimes like I don't worry as much about when they posted, especially if you're headhunting, right? If you're trying to find good people, you're not just uh, posting a job and praying for the people to come in to be good. You're like, I want to go out and find some good people and pull them in that don't know about us. So that's where you can use these filters to travel if you have, uh, or to zero in, excuse me, if you have you know, need that need to travel or you want a specific company. I use this a ton. Like there's, a company that I know has good people and matches one of our clients or matches a comp my company that I like their culture and stuff like that, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to that, after that company and I'm gonna look for them. So you can add in these different titles, you gotta close out of this. Now I can say, okay, I want every resume in the last 12 months and years of experience, I'm gonna go, let's go three to three to seven. And you got you have a required box right there, and then you hit update right here. And now I'm down to 72. To me, that's a lot better number to be going through than uh, a thousand. I get burnt out uh, after about three pages. Want to change it up? So just looking HR specialists. That's interesting that they're showing up, and that's why some of these Boolean strings uh, emails just aren't great. Cause you get candidates like this. Um, this guy's a BI developer, not something that necessarily a good fit for this, but an AWS cloud engineer, super interested. So I want to look at his, once again, gives me an overview, looks like his job's ended. Um, and this is a, uh, sometimes a funky thing. So it says Nashville, Tennessee, and he met in, looks like he's got his bachelor's there. And, but now he's at rest in Virginia. Sometimes with candidates, the radius search, they'll, they can go in and put Seattle, Washington. That, that's where they want to be. But they may do that for a number of different areas. So just pay attention to that. Just a little FYI. So, okay, this person, I don't want to relocate right now. That's not my budget. Whatever it may be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to someone that's here, especially when you got a ton of talent in, like, a Seattle market. Okay, it's great. This guy's a Python developer, deep understanding, technical trends, Linux. I mean, he's hitting all my key skills in his summary of what he's looking for. And so if I don't know enough about the resume or about the position that they're looking for, this is where I either send it to the hiring manager or I have a phone call and just figure out their interest. This guy looks, looks great for a strong open source backend developer role. And so I would, uh, so this means at least, Somewhat, the string's accurate, but that could be just a one-off and out of that 72 as well. Then I'd keep moving on, and as you get down to the bottom, you have your different pages where you can go, go through and move and find different candidates. So that's the kind of the basic version of what I would do for a longer Boolean string in Monster. Now, if I want to go back and say, I want to get real specific. So there's Golang, these are all software development languages, Golang or Python or Ruby, C++. So that one gives me a picture of what they're looking for, type of, type of developer. And two, like it is, I want to get very specific and find somebody with those. I mean, I know they're nice to have this where I'm getting lots of candidates, I can kind of be more selective. So I'm going to edit my Boolean string here. I'm still going to keep all the, the title stuff. I'm just going to even get rid of this. Actually, I'll just start and just go, I'm going to go, and you can write Golang in a couple different ways. 
and it also shows up as go quite a bit. And so short words as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know if this is just tradition of mine or it actually works, but I always put them in quotes as well, just because if not, geo can show up in a lot of different things and a lot of different words, and it'll just po pull those. So I'm just looking for that as a word, right? And I'm just going to say, or Python and C++, or C++. And that's it. And C++ is, uh, I know it's short, but it's such a unique thing that I don't, I don't need to quote that because of the plus plus, you're not going to get in lots of words. And I'm just going to go and developer. And Linux. And I'm going to hit update right here. And interesting enough, so this person that we liked is now the top of our list. So we go into 69 candidates. Uh, let's look at J. One thing that pops up here is if you scroll down on the previous resume and you're down here, when you go to the next candidate, it pulls you down here. So you always got to remember to scroll back up, look at the resume, software developer. I mean, not a ton. We have knowledge C++, Linux. I mean, it's kind of a light resume. So it, this really comes down to your personal preference, and I mean, obviously, looks like a student not that long ago, a couple years of experience, uh, and been here for a couple of years. But not the not the best resume. It really kind of depends on whether you'd want to talk to them or not, and just have a conversation. So this is where it has it doesn't even highlight C++, and it has Linux in there. But other than that, nothing. So. That's where some of the job boards can be a little interesting. Um, so now I'm going to jump into ZipRecruiter and give you a quick overview of that and the searching. So I'll basically use some of the same search terms that we have in the same role and just show you the kind of the different tweaks of ZipRecruiter. So in ZipRecruiter, you always come into the resume database here, and I hit search resumes. Um, you can do this if you have active jobs you're looking for. I don't, we don't post jobs, so I don't have any of that. The keywords is where you essentially put in your Boolean string. There are a couple things to be aware of here. Like if I go, say, C++, and, and I pause or I click somewhere else, it's going to load that automatically. So it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine within ZipRecruiter because now if, you, if I go and uh, – web services, I, it'll add it to it, but if I want to make any changes, I've got to essentially delete it and start all over. So here I would say, I'm going to post in our, our string. I'm going to do our location. Let's do San Francisco this time. And then radius, we're going to get 30 miles. And I'm going to use this where I'm going to take, uh, you can use job titles down here if you like, previous companies. They all have a lot of the same filters, just displayed in different ways. Freshness, that's basically when the candidate is posted. So I'm going to go maybe last 30 days, and you drag that to 90 days. Minimum education, I want a bachelor's degree. Experience, one or two to nine. Any select industries, so it's a little more streamlined. So how these all work is obviously off of resume views. And they all give you kind of a preview. So I'm going to look at Ezekiel here. And so you can hover over it. And a lot of times, I'd say about a third of the time, I think there's nothing in the preview like this. So even when I look at it, you get nothing. So you really have to go and view and use a view to get in there. Um, but nice resume, data structures, an application developer. I don't know, that's a short stint. Not sure what's going on there. But geolocation, time dice for GPS, I mean, it seems uh, more complicated and challenging. Python, he's got the number of different projects he's working on. But still a younger developer, so on the borderline of what we need, but maybe he's worth talking to. So the only thing I don't like about if I want to forward this out is, uh, so when our uh, director of operations set up this account, 
So I can only forward this resume back to him. I can't forward it to somebody else within the organization. I don't think I don't like that, but you can kind of forward it to your, if you have it set up, forward it to yourself and then go through your email and break it up. It just kind of adds another step. But one thing here is it's like, okay, I've searched his resume, found it, and I want to go back to here. If I do that, that actually starts me all over. So one of the things, uh, and if anybody knows a workaround, please let me know, but I always hit, have to hit back to the preview and back again. And so it's a little bit of a, 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 just a little clicky for my, my taste. And now you can see that we've, we've looked at um, Ezekiel's information. And I'm going to look down here. I'm going to go to check out Mo. Once again, another profile view. So it's, it's, it's a little difficult to even get an idea if you want to look at them, but you almost got to trust your string that you put in and say, hey, okay, I want to have at least burn a view on them. All right, got some certificates. Just looks like it's been doing that. Bachelor's in computer science. Uh, front end developer, JavaScript and Python. That looks great. Uh, worked with back end, QA, sure. And the other thing, they, they don't highlight technologies like Monster does, which is nice sometimes quick for I, your eye to catch things. Python, C, languages that we're looking for, Linux. And interesting thing is, I'm not seeing like uh, web services. So just some of these are, like I said, They'll pull in people. It's more in their in their best interest to pull in more people. So that's a sometimes they leave things out that shouldn't be. Once again, I would have to click back and back again that I've uh, that you've looked at or save searches. So you can save and uh, email me this search anytime new candidates show up. I just haven't had great success with those emails, and this became more of an annoyance of my, um, to me than anything that I end up just deleting. So that is about it. I mean, I know there's a ton of other job boards out there and stuff that we could go through. Um, if you have any questions or have any specific job boards you'd like uh, help with, please re feel free to reach out. We can set up one on one. I'd love to help you in any way I can. And once again, I really appreciate everybody's time today, and hopefully this was helpful for you. Look forward to talking to you in the future. And if you have any questions, you can look up Connor Fagan on uh, LinkedIn uh, under Scout App. He's out of Portland, and I'm Brant Waldron uh, out of Salt Lake City on uh, LinkedIn as well. Or you can go to our site uh, if you're interested in looking at our, our software and what we do for you guys. Like I said, once again, we go out, scour the databases for you, put a quick human eye to it to make sure that that accountant is now still an accountant, not just got a degree in accounting, so they pop up on that, that search. Um, and then we give you a simple accident tracking system for you guys to look at, review, and to uh, basically build your own pipeline for your candidates. So once again, have a great day. Thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate it.